so much to do, so little time. Whoa! Oh, shoot. Uh, as if my room wasn't in enough of a mess already. Oh, hello there. I didn't see you there. Uh, I'm just cleaning up my messy room before college starts. Picked a rather bad day to do it. My semester starts pretty soon. Well, it's not like any other mall. It's not like any other railway enthusiast's rooms are clean. You should have seen the Reverend Audrey's study. Of course, I've never been there myself, but if you've seen the footage, you'd probably get an idea. You know, the Reverend Audrey wasn't just an author of the Railway series, he was also a model railway enthusiast. He liked to create model railways in his attic and in his study. He even had one in which he took around to railway shows. In fact, there is one model railway layout in which he based a story on. Now this story is a pretty rare story. It was published in the Church of England newspaper from February to May of 1960. Not a lot of people know about it, so I'm kind of here to get it back to everyone's attention and remind everyone the other works that the Reverend Audrey worked on. And this story is rather unusual for Reverend Audrey's style. In fact, I think you may find a lot of surprises in this story. Have fun listening to the story and um, I'm just gonna try and get this mess cleaned up again. Botheration. Roger bounced up and down with excitement. Look Daddy, look! I'm driving my train on your railway! This was a special treat. Roger had his own train set and oval of rails, but never before had Daddy allowed him to bring his engine and coaches to the garden shed where he had his own model line. Daddy showed Roger how to work the controls. Then he sat in front while Roger stood on a box having the time of his life. Roger's train roared round and round, going slow or fast, stopping or starting just as he wanted. He played gloriously for a while, then stopped the train in the tunnel. It's gone, Daddy, he announced. Now let's play proper trains. Proper trains was their name for Daddy's sequence of trains running to a timetable, as all proper trains do. Right, said Daddy. We'll get your train out, then you can go out in front and tell me what to do. Roger enjoyed pretending to be the fat controller while Daddy worked the trains. Daddy, can you come please? Hello, Mummy's calling. I must go. If you stay, Roger, can I trust you? Yes, Daddy. Roger knew what that meant. It meant he had promised not to touch. These things are precious, Daddy had said. Your little fingers don't understand yet, and they might break something. You wouldn't want to do that. Roger didn't want to do it, but he had. One day, he picked up a coach. Only to look at it, Mummy, he explained tearfully. And it dropped and broke. Daddy was cross. He hadn't allowed Roger in the railway shed for three whole days. So now, Roger didn't touch. He didn't even move his train. 
He left it in the tunnel. He sat on the chair waiting for Daddy and looked at the railway. He loved the hills and trees and houses, the river and gardens and stations. He liked the animals and the people who lived there. They looked real. In fact, to Roger, they were real people with real names doing real things. Mr. Horker was climbing the hill over the tunnel to see to his sheep. Mrs. Horker had taken her basket. She was going shopping. Ellen Horker was feeding the pigs while Simon, her brother, strolled about with his hands in his pockets. He's lazy, thought Roger. Why doesn't he plant the garden as his daddy asked him to? He looked at the plate layers. Course Bill and Bert and Jim and Ted aren't lazy. They're just resting. They've been working hard mending the line. Roger half closed his eyes. They look realer than this, he thought. The room was warm and he felt sleepy. It's scandalous! I buy a ticket and get in the train. Do they take me to the junction? No, they bind me, they bump me, they whirl me round and round and leave me in the tunnel. Frog! I'm going straight to the station! I shall demand my money back and so shall I! And I. And I. Roger rubbed his eyes and stared. A crowd of little people surged out of the tunnel, all talking at once in shrill, angry voices.